Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. First of all, let's address the do. This is a hair mask. It's been on for quite some time. Probably should have been washed off by now. It's very crispy, but I haven't had time to wash my hair, okay? So don't judge. We're all friends here. Back to the video. This is possibly my most classy and sophisticated makeover yet. It's a bold statement, but I'm gonna go with it. So I was tempted to add more to this piece, but I didn't because I just wanted it to be quite simple. Also, this is its third makeover. I am not in the habit of painting already painted pieces, especially if they're ones that I've painted, because I do truly believe there is a buyer out there for everything. However, the previous two makeovers, I just didn't feel were quite right for this piece. And I hope, and I hope you agree, that I've nailed it with this one. When I said it had three, two previous makeovers, this was it third, I actually lied a little bit because once I'd stripped it of its previous paint job, I then painted it in this blue color that you can see, sort of a tealy blue. It's called Oasis and it's from the Silk Mineral Paint range. And I wanted to do some kind of design on the panels and that was a no-go. So I sanded it all back and painted it in cactus. That was my base color. And it sat in my workshop for quite a while, weeks in fact, before I decided what I wanted to do with it. So the base colour is Cactus, it's from the Silk Mineral Paint range. And the reason I've painted a base colour is because this is quite a warm toned wood underneath there. It's got ready undertones in the wood. And that would usually indicate that I would have issues with bleed through. So I'm using the built-in primer that is in Silk which is equivalent to using one coat of Boss as my stain blocking primer. And the fact that it's green is a bonus because that's what color I decided to paint it. And there was lots of kind of to and fro in with how far I should have gone with this because it's such a nice piece. It's constructed out of solid wood. It's got dovetail joints. It's a really pretty piece. But in the end, I did just keep it simple. So here's what I did. The color that I'm currently painting in is collard greens. Now, I didn't want to just give it a one color finish because I felt like it did need a little bit more, just not crazy too much more. So I'm using collard greens over the majority of the piece and then I'm leaving the center panels of the doors. Obviously, it's got a nice bit of detail on the doors and also the drawer fronts. I'm leaving that and then I'm using Holy Guacamole, which is also kind of a muted green, but obviously a lot lighter. And I'm using the Best Dang brush to blend them together. Now, I've never blended these two colors together. I had no idea how they were gonna turn out. I've kind of done a smoky boho blend with this. It's not a perfect blend because that's just not my style but I'm using the Best Dang brush and I've sprayed a tiny bit of water on the surface just so that those colors fuse together. And what I'm doing now is taking the excess paint off my Best Dang brush because when the bristles get too loaded up, it restricts the ability to kind of blend the colors together seamlessly and you kind of get a bit of muddiness. So if that happens, you just need to make sure you take the excess paint off your bristles and go back in with the blend and you'll see that it's quite a pretty blend those two colors together. I think it, it is looking nice. So I followed that same process with the draw fronts. As you can see, what I'm doing is using a brush to apply my collard greens and then using a separate brush for my holy guacamole. So I'm keeping those two brushes completely separate and allocated to those specific colors. And then my best dang brush is the brush that I'm using for blending. Now, like I say, just make sure when you are blending, if you're new to blending, try and choose two colors that are close to one another. So these are obviously two greens and they melt together really well. The number one thing that I see people doing or the mistake I see people doing when they're trying to blend is either using too much paint or too little paint. And I am not a, a professional blender by any stretch of the imagination. It's not really a technique that I do a lot, but that is definitely 
something where people go wrong is using too much paint or too little paint and then you get lots of um, brush marks and texture and also people using lots and lots of water. You only need a small amount of water at a time because with water and with paint you can always add more but it's much harder to take it away if you apply too much at once. So the top again is very similar to the draw fronts. I also did the effect on the side as well. And I didn't want to paint the top just one sort of flat color. I wanted to kind of give it the same effect, but obviously it's just on a larger scale. So the place where you put your kind of holy guacamole or your lighter color is going to be a highlighter. And then I just went around that edge and just merged the two. And you can see me spritzing it very, very lightly with water until the kind of um, edges between the two colors merge together so I also go kind of backwards and forwards with this obviously it's a larger surface there's going to be more paint and also I put way too much holy guacamole in the center so this is what I was just saying about how much paint you put on the piece you can see that original placement of holy guacamole was only in the center but because I put too much paint down it's kind of taken over and it's gone to the edges I mean I like it like this and I managed to kind of blend it out but I definitely put too much paint in the center and that means it kind of went further than I anticipated. So when you blend paint, there is inevitably going to be a little bit of texture because of how you blend the two colors together or three colors together or however many colors together. But there is inevitably going to be a little bit more texture than if you were just using a one color finish. So to combat that, you can just lightly sand in between the coats. Just make sure you remove any dust off the surface before you go in with your second coat of paint. So your second coat of paint is just gonna build on that coverage. Now, I only did two coats of paint due to the fact that I already had a green undercoat, which was helping me massively with the coverage. But depending on the color that you're painting over, if you've got a really dark color wood, or if you're painting over a white primer, so two extremes, you may need three coats of paint. And that's because personally, I use less paint than if I was just to paint one solid color. So I'm doing this real time to show you that it's, you know, it's not sped up or anything, just to show you the technique. And on your second coat, you will probably use less paint because you already have a layer of the paint there and you're just gonna do exactly the same thing. And this is the time to correct any mistakes that you might have made on the first layer. So if you wanted to take your lighter color and make it a smaller area, you can do that on your second coat. If you're really happy with the placement of colors, then you can just go ahead and pretty much copy exactly what you did on your first step. Again, make sure your blending brush, which is the best dang brush in this case, is clean and pretty much dry. I use a very small amount of water just to mist, lightly mist the bristles. You don't want this sopping wet because all that'll do is basically just smudge all the colors together and you'll get a muddy effect and what you can do just to neaten it up is just take your original brush that you applied your darker color with and just go around the edges in case that green that lighter green in the center or your lighter color has kind of spread out a little bit because I am a little bit heavy-handed when it comes to blending the key is to keep your hands super light so I did have to keep correcting myself and making sure that I wasn't pressing on too hard because again, that gives you texture and it also just creates um, a kind of swirly effect on the paint itself and you don't want that. You just want the two colors to kind of melt together. So I was actually really pleased with the placement of the two colors and I just made sure that I wasn't going too heavy with the holy guacamole so that it didn't spread out too far like it did on the top in the first coat so i'm just keeping that holy guacamole really concentrated to the center of the drawers because even though it's a lighter color it does still have quite a lot of dominance when you start spreading that color out and merging the two i didn't want to take it outside of those panels that you can see on the drawers and the doors. So all this is just gonna do is build up your coverage and allow you to correct any mistakes you did on the first coat. So when I stripped this piece, 
it got paint stripper all inside and it made a bit of a mess. So as you can see, I've sanded down the interior as well. And just to bring that kind of wood grain back, because I don't really want to paint the interior, I'm using two Dixie Belle products that I've mixed together. So I'm using Big Mama's Butter and No Pain Gel Stain, which are both oil-based products, and that means you're absolutely fine to mix them two together. And this is gonna make a kind of a wax stain. And I'm using the deepest brown, which is the shade Espresso, and I've mixed it with some Big Mama's Butter in the tin. And as you can see, I'm doing the interior. You can't really see because it went really dark and we were having thunderstorms, but you'll be able to see on the door in a second that this is just going to give you almost a stain finish. But because you've mixed it with the Big Mama's Butter, it's not as concentrated and it also means you can wipe off any excess. It just gives a really kind of nice tinted wax finish and helps if you've got any dulled wood grain just to kind of revive that wood grain and inject a little bit of colour back into it. So once it's been sat on the surface, I only waited about 20 minutes. I just went in with some shop cloth and just removed all the excess because if you don't remove the excess, it's just gonna stay tacky and it will take an absolute age to dry but you don't need to wait long. So the wood will absorb as much as of the product as it needs to. And you can just see when I'm doing the kind of the back of the door, it's just injected a load of color and nourished the grain and just brought it back to life versus the original, which was really dried out and kind of dusty looking wood. So to seal the piece, I'm going to use wax on the main body of it and varnish on the top because I want to offer a slightly bit more protection on the top. So I'm just taking a 220 grit sanding sponge and just basically really, really softly just taking any texture out the top because I didn't want any. And when you varnish, it picks up all the texture. So I just wanted to make it look a lot smoother. And the texture is just from blending, like I mentioned before. And then I just took any dust off the surface with a microfiber cloth. And then I always decant my top coat. I say I always do, that's a lie. I'm supposed to always decant my top coat because it stops you getting any contaminants in your top coat tub. So I always try and put it on a paper plate and then I'm lightly misting my foam and dandy brush. When I say lightly misting, I do mean very, very lightly misting. And then I just squoze it into the foam so that it wasn't all sitting on the surface. And then I whacked it on. I've sped it up, but it is quite a fast process because I wanted to get the whole entire top done. And then, once it's on and it's not looking perfect but once it's on and before it's had a chance to dry i go over it with the exactly same foam and dandy brush which is a foam pad on a handle and then i just run that over the piece in one direction so all the same direction in my case left to right and that is just going to lay the paint off uh, lay the varnish off it's not paint this is actually clear coat satin and it's just going to lay it off and just stop you getting any texture or any kind of globs of the clear coat in one place. And it also means that the light hitting it is all gonna hit it in the same direction. If you laid it off from left to right and then right to left in kind of like a brush strokey way, you would have, it would go in different directions and that can sometimes show up. So while that first coat of clear coat on the top was drying, I moved on to the rest of the piece and that's the bit that I'm gonna wax. And the reason I'm gonna wax it is because I personally prefer wax and it's a lot quicker. And also it's not gonna have items placed on the sides or the front as the top will. Hence the reason for me doing clear coat on the top and wax on the rest. So I'm just putting down a base of clear wax first. This is Best Dang Wax in clear and I'm using a blue applicator sponge to apply it with because it's just my preferred method. Um, I also do use a brush sometimes as well, but because this is quite a big surface and it's got quite a lot of flat panels, I'm using a sponge. Once it had, had that first coat of clear wax applied all over it, I then went in with Best Dang Wax in brown, and I'm using a premium chip brush here just because it's a smaller surface area than a sponge, and I only wanna put brown wax in certain areas, so I didn't want to spread it out all over the place, and I'm just adding the brown wax in the areas that I wanna create a little bit more shading and depth just to darken the color slightly, 
Brown is a really good way of doing this. Black is a little bit more extreme. I just wanted something quite soft with this piece and keeping it fairly simple. So I'm applying it with a brush and then I'm going back in with my original blue sponge and just taking any excess brown wax off and also blending the two together. So blending the clear wax and the brown wax together which means you get a really soft look. I did three coats of clear coat on the top of the piece in total and then I did add a little bit of brown wax for shading once that had dried and here's a little close up of the two colours blended together. There's a shot of the interior, you can just see the wood grain that's been brought back to life with that custom mix of products and here's the finished shot, I hope you like it. Thank you for watching the video, hope you enjoyed it, it's always much appreciated. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you next time, hopefully without a hair masking.